It's a little detail that can go overlooked. This test was a catalog ad test with a custom frame on the carousel. It's pretty standard seeing the, the catalog ad showing with the different products from your catalog. Meta Shops is growing pretty fast. It's been a big initiative on their end. We were seeing a lot of success with catalogs generally, and we said, hey, like there is this feature where you can edit the creative in the carousel and basically upload your own custom frame to go around the image of the product. In this case, it was it was basically adding a text callout in the top right corner. Launched a split test there to see how that would compare. A standout brand saw a 21% lift in catalog campaign ROAS overall. So really positive test for us. Looking for an effective way to drive traffic to your Shopify site and increase sales? Critio's integration with Shopify helps attract buyers with relevant ads, deliver rich consumer experiences, and drive better commerce outcomes. The Critio plus Shopify integration allows merchants to launch in a matter of clicks, meaning no development or technical skills are needed. Benefits of this integration include expanded reach, greater personalization, elevated acquisition rates for high intent buyers, and increased retention. With Critio, you can acquire new customers across the open web and build audiences from the world's largest commerce data set. To get started, visit critio.com forward slash DTC. It's all killer, no filler. I'm Eric. This is the DTC Podcast. And today we are back with Taylor from the Pilot House team to discuss some further pod testing that he's been doing. If you recall, uh, about a month and a half ago, we did, a, did an episode where we reviewed some of the tests that Taylor was putting into effect across uh, multiple accounts, putting significant spend behind some hypotheses around meta ads. And we're back with a few more today. Taylor, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I uh, I probably shot one for twenty in my basketball basketball game last night, but apart from that, I'm doing good. We we bounced back and we're having a good day. Hopefully, some better results from these tests, uh, and I hopefully you were a force on the rebounds, as I know you can be, uh, even though you were lacking on the points. I put I put up a good defensive effort, so I, I take pride in that. Big the big fundamental is what we call you, uh, <laughs> both on the basketball court and at the agency. So. Talk a little bit about uh, these pod tests that you ran, these three pod tests that we're going to be talking about today. Yes, we've got three different pod tests. Um, Just a recap on pod testing for anybody who may have missed the first episode. It's basically our coordinated effort to run statistically significant tests across multiple brands so that we basically we can then go and deploy that info to more brands that might find value that we work with, but also share it broadly for anybody who could benefit from it. So we, we've had three kind of notable pod tests to share. A lot of our process is focused on how we would typically media buy in an account. So we're looking for high impact, heavy hitting um, things that rise up to the top um, after we give it some some time and some a chance to dig deep and take a look at the data. And yeah, I'm excited to share these ones. Two of them are a little bit more technical. And then one is a, a pretty simple creative type hack that uh, is making a pretty big difference in some some places. And, worth worth testing cool let's start with uh, pod test number one cost cap versus bid cap this is something i see debated on the the ddc twitter quite often uh talk about what we were exactly testing here what we were looking for yeah so with this one um we basically wanted to take a look at two of these key bidding strategies um and see what could work best for our brands so when we work with our brands as uh with the majority of DTC brands, you're balancing volume with efficiency. We want to be profitable, but we also want to grow at the rate we want to grow at and find that sweet spot to intersect both where we're, we're rolling and we're, we're growing at a really healthy rate. With this test, um, we launched basically seeing which of these bid strategies shows more strength towards finding that sweet spot, but also as far as like whether there is a clear pattern in, in the volume versus efficiency that side of things. And I think to give a bit of backstory to that just to kind of recap some of the definitions would probably be helpful um, given that there are multiple bidding strategies and they're all fairly similar for the most part, but there are important nuances. So um, cost cap, the first cell of this test, that is basically adding a cost control, usually to your target CPA um, and the meta defines it as it's aiming to keep the costs around the amount that you want regardless of market conditions. So you're trying to keep profitable and aim for an average. 
the average is the key part of cost cap because it's basically going to try to spend when it's able to do so at that average. But Meta also notes uh, within their description of cost cap that the adherence to cost per result, like your CPA goal limit, isn't guaranteed. So it does mean that, say, you choose seven day click or seven day click one day view as your attribution setting, there's a good chance that it's going to try to get to that target on that average attribution window, but you might see more up and down day to day. It may very well not even land around that mark, and we've seen that before. Um, and we do often find that bid cap tends to stay tighter to it, um, given some of the nuances with that. And I can explain that here with bid cap being a manual bid rather than cost cap being an automatic bid. You're letting Meta do the bidding based on the target average that you want. Bid cap, you're actually setting what that maximum CPA bid essentially is across all the auctions that it's going to enter rather than meta dynamically bidding based on that that average goal that you've set. So it's a little bit of a nuanced difference, but it meta defines that one as it's meant for advertisers who have a strong understanding of predicted conversion rates and can calculate the right bid, meaning that you're likely going to see less spend if your bid's too low. Um, and also potentially deviating the wrong direction if your bid's too high. So that, that one's pretty important to have a good, good sense of all the, the data points. Um, but ultimately we, we kind of had the biased view or like the, we've seen this across like every account, big cap tends to stay tighter to what we're working towards, but we wanted to go and launch this test to basically prove all that data out. Very cool. And you have to select at this point. It's been a while since I've actually been on the tools, it's been on Meta. But you actually you, these you have to select between these options. Basically, you can't. You're not especially if you're if you're selecting a conversion uh, outcome. Correct. Yeah, and the, the default is typically the highest volume one, which um, historically has been called lowest cost as well. It's basically maximize delivery and conversions and spend your full day budget through. Um, and the other one as well to throw into the mix is highest value. So something like a min ROAS type type bid, so it's going to aim at, aim to spend your budget and focus on the highest value purchases. So this one's actually really great if you're gunning for ROAS over CPA and you also are interested in how AOV comes into play because AOV isn't really a factor per se in a CPA um, as far as like the formula for it. Um, but when it comes to ROAS, AOV, or your MSRP, that is a huge part of the formula. So that, that one factors that in too. But generally, the default has been highest volume. It's been moving towards this direction. Bid cap has to be CBO now as well. Um, generally, uh, as far as like the technical setting, you can add, you can still add bid controls to ABO, but there's some nuance there as well. So we're we're seeing it trend towards that highest volume, but um, nonetheless, they're all still available, and it's it's interesting to see what data we can pull from it. Well, we'll put highest volume to the test, but for now, we're comparing cost cap to bid cap. Uh, what any other considerations or structure that went into this? Yeah, so the big thing with pod testing for us is we want to try to standardize it. So our aim is to get statistically significant data, enough data for me to feel confident in what I'm sharing. Um, and we want to have controls in place. So matching the setup between the audiences, for example, in this case, we ran two different campaigns and we matched all of the structure within the ad sets apart from the fact that we're running bid cap and cost cap. Um, what we did here, though, that was interesting is we did have multiple ad sets and we would typically vary the bids or cost caps set at about a 15 to 20% difference between each other. So we would basically have different tighter and looser ones set, like more aggressive, less aggressive, more profitability based, uh, more scale based. And um, and then basically ran the test for a set amount of time there Uh we do have an internal qualification process where if a pod test that we come up with doesn't end up panning out for X amount of the brands or multiple brands, we might move on and, and switch to a different pod test. In this case, um, we qualified this test through the brand selected and, and kept on going. And uh, yeah, this, this test actually, we, we ended up putting over $25,000 behind it, uh, which, is, which is pretty significant. So excited to share some of those results. Yeah, what, what happened? Yeah, so uh, our, in this case, our, our, our assumptions were generally more aligned with what we were expecting. Um, big caps overall outperformed the cost caps. When I say outperformed, that's relative as well. Um, I'll give some brand examples. So one brand saw twice as high ROAS from the bid cap versus their cost cap, and the other brand saw a 15% lift in ROAS on bid cap versus the cost cap. Um, 
just as a couple of notable standouts from this test to show you a little bit of the range, but generally speaking, we saw improved performance from an efficiency standpoint on the big cap side of things across the board. Um, and what, as a marketer, you want to see that, right? Because that's a one one p- little bit of control you're taking out of Facebook's hand that you're still tr- trying to prove that you know best in a way, right? Like it's like you, you give them full control when you just set your full cost that goes into it, but you, you can control your beta a little bit more. So it's, it's interesting that it won. 100%. Yeah. We know that as the platforms continue to take more of a simplified, consolidated type approach, you know, there's, there's the argument too, like, or the question, like, what does media buying become in that case? Um, but this, this supports that that component that, you know, maybe it's not as much spending time in the, the nitty gritty details like it once was, but it's, it, the strategy is still really important from a structure and, uh, and testing and launch approach uh, point in the campaign planning approach. So um, with that said, the other part of this that's really important to consider is the fact that that's speaking from a ROAS perspective, the brand with twice the ROAS did have about 50% of the spend versus the cost cap. So it's important to say that like, if it were a case where the both ROAS elements were basically aligned to driving towards that end goal target that we have, um, like the, the efficiency of the brand and, and ultimately the incremental revenue we're adding, then the cost cap could in fact outperform as far as how we're, how that's relative. But um, it, it's all, all nuanced. In this case, the, uh, there, there was a greater gain given that, we basically matched revenue, but on half the spend with the big cap. So that, that truly did win in this case, but it, it depends on, on what the objective is. So what does that mean? Like practically going forward for like when, when we learn something like this, cause it's like, it's, it's interesting because we learn it and maybe that it, it sort of informs our biases a little bit and gives us better instincts potentially, but also it's, it means we're, we're never going to stop testing uh, cost caps probably. Right. Correct. Yeah. Cause there's all sorts of questions, right? Like we use, one attribution setting in this, maybe a different one works better with cost cap than it does with big cap. Maybe it works better during a promo period um, where we want it to be a little bit looser, but still have a certain amount of control over it. There's so many different questions. Where I typically go with that when I gain learnings from this is I know this is one isolated test, so it can, it can vary, vary depending on all the other variables that would be controlled for. Um, it does support kind of a hypothesis that we generally had roughly, and it basically opens up more questions for me to write down in my list and then keep working through testing in a way that moves us towards those end goals at a very high level and broad, broad kind of way of explaining it. So it opens up a lot of, a lot of opportunities for further testing. The other pieces we used top ads in this case, um, it'd be interesting to see how test ads fare and can we get them uh, through a period of social proof building and learning, et cetera, et cetera, in time for us to then scale uh, scaled efficiently within this format, or is it going to give us faulty data that way? There's all sorts of questions we can ask and uh, things that we'd have to keep testing. But if you had to pick one right now, it'd be bid cap. It would be big cap over cost cap. Yeah. If I had to pick one. So um, again, it could be different brand to brand and, and in different, different cases, but from the average that we saw, if you're not testing big cap and you're looking for something to test, it's, it's worth a shot and, uh, and seeing what you can do with that. All right, so then pod test two is a little bit of a uh, it's like a relegation match then because it's highest volume versus cost cap. Yeah, so the idea with this one was since we have the the tighter controlled ones in that other test, we wanted to see okay, like this is a little bit more of the automated approach. We remove that more manual bidding version via the big cap out of the test. Let's see what these two look like. Given that one is we're maybe setting the bumpers higher than the other one, which is like, let's let it go based on how we've structured all the details in the ad set, the ads that we've selected for it, all that type of stuff. Um, So this was really like an automation uh, head to head type thing, seeing what these two would look like. We matched a pretty similar structure here using the same audience, same attribution settings, same exclusions in the audience, matching the creative between the ad sets and the campaigns. And, uh, and then using our average CPA as a guide for where to start our bid at. With that said, um, some interesting results here as well. We actually saw lowest cost outperform uh, cost cap slightly in this test. It was p- fairly comparable. So the big thing was in this test, factoring in scale gains from lowest cost over the tighter, uh, tighter spend that we saw with the, the cost cap, the winner from the test itself at this time was lowest cost. 
it, it had about a 15% improved ROAS, twice as much volume. Highest volume, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. slightly improved on the ROAS, but the volume was twice as high, and the CTR actually was quite a bit higher, which I thought was interesting from this test. Not necessarily something we can draw a ton from, but there was a C- CPM and CTR difference, which, uh, which was interesting from a delivery perspective. Super interesting. So that, the obvious question is then, like, wh- what have we tested highest volume versus bid cap? Yeah, so that's that's something that's ongoing in a lot of places is one of the takeaways from this is when we're looking at our scale campaigns, we we're now looking at it like, hey, big cap and highest volume is probably a good one two punch to consider and go with. Um, so not included in today's pod testing updates, but accounts are are working with that right now. So excited to see where but, where but that's goes. kind of the breaking news there, because I think probably a lot of I don't know, maybe maybe a lot of people would be thinking bid cap versus cost cap. But really, with the dark horse here is just good old classic highest volume. 100%. Yeah. And this is, again, kind of one of those contextual type type elements, with big cap being so dependent on the manual piece more so than yeah. highest volume or cost cap. It's one of those ones that's also got to be treated with care, because it, it can have more drastic differences in, in results. But these are cases where we feel pretty confident in the winning ads that we've moved through all of our testing process, and that we're bringing into these scale campaigns to see what we can do to, to grow f- further from there. So is it literally just a mix then in term? Is it like, you know, 40, whatever that is, 30, 30? Is it like 50, 25, 25? Is it like in terms of what your camp, you know, do we have any idea what we're spending on mostly? Do, do you think most of the ca- accounts are on like 51% bid caps or, or, or how, what do you think? How does that break down? Yeah, I, I would say it breaks down actually more to lowest cost. Um, yeah. And that's mainly because we it's it's very predictable from a delivery standpoint. And we're usually at a point of scaling once we feel really confident in the ads that we've broken to that point. And the, there are certain benefits of lowest cost. It, it really tries to maximize Meta's automation to the full. So there is yeah. an element of that. But I think what this test shows is that it's not like you can still make major incremental gains from trying something new and not getting stuck in your ways when it comes to some of those bid strategies or really any other kind of strategic element. Cause I saw like from the, the cost cap and lowest cost side, the lowest cost one had a 25% higher CPM than the cost cap, which I thought that was really, really interesting as well. That shows a pretty significant difference in audience delivery. Both were well within our prospecting CPMs. Um, but I, I thought that was interesting because that shows we're probably reaching a different audience segment and that like that little detail we can pull out and create a hypothesis on gives us a whole new strategic direction to operate with. So we're pretty, we're pretty flexible and fluid. Different accounts are going to look different, but generally speaking, um, I think the, the takeaway here is that, well, we, we like a lot of the, the automated benefits of running highest volume or lowest cost. Essentially. Um, we at the same time should factor in, opportunities to scale on bid cap and whatnot as well, potentially even tearing off our confidence level in, in, in other elements that we're testing and whatnot and factoring that into those decisions. Very cool. And is there a reason that we, that we shy away from the fourth one there, the, uh, the, the min ROAS one? Is it because the ROAS calculations on platform on, fa- on Facebook are, are still a are bit off, so it feels like you don't want to go all the way to, to min ROAS? Yeah, there's, there's no real specific... Like, I wouldn't say there's a specific reason at, at this point. I mean, it it's another one. Like, I, I put it kind of right in that category. It can work for some brands. And some of our brands are using it using it more. I'd say, like, more commonly, we've had success with highest volume and big cap based on the testing that we've done. But that's that's also something that's queued up as part of our list for this, this next set of tests. Like, a lot of our brands use a mix of all of these. But what we're aiming to do through the, the pod testing is just put some, some added... Uh, across pilot house brands data behind it and, and give our, our team some extra stuff to work with. So we've had some feedback on that as well. And that's, uh, that's one of the, the tests coming up too. You alluded to this earlier, and I think it's just worth mentioning that this is, you know, if you're starting out on Facebook ads and you're thinking you might be able to, you know, you replicate these results, keep in mind that this, as you said in that last segment there, like these are your winning creatives, your winning campaigns, your winning audiences. It's like all the things that you've spent, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars to drill into to, to try to get these pure results. You're not, you know, and it's, and it's good to know that even the campaigns, even the ones that lost these tests still had probably what the client would consider to be good results. Correct. Yeah. That's, that's the key thing here. It's like, we're really looking to see, and part of this consideration is like, 
us trying to understand what is going to be the most impactful thing for us to do. So like we launched these pod tests and we have, have this data now. And then another step from here is with a wave of creative tests coming up, where do these sit from incremental growth or difference versus some of those creative tests? Cause I would hypothesize that creative makes a bigger difference, but we're going to let the data speak and see, see how that goes. Very cool. All right. Well, this third pod test, I think was probably the most impactful one. And it's probably the one that the least people are playing around with. Uh, why don't you tell us about it? Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's a little detail that can go overlooked in ad accounts really easily when you're focused on either the day-to-day or the bigger strategic stuff. Um, so this pod test was a catalog ad test with a custom frame um, on on the carousel for the catalog ads. So with this one, what we were doing is it's pretty standard seeing the, the dynamic product ad uh, or catalog ad showing with the different products from your catalog. Meta Shops is growing pretty fast. It's been a big initiative on their end. Um, so we were seeing a lot of success with catalogs generally in, in a lot of places. Uh, again, it's a bit brand to brand, but generally speaking, there's there's a lot of potential there. So what we did was we said, hey, like there is this feature where you can edit the creative in the carousel and basically upload your own custom frame to go around the typically image of the product from your, your catalog feed. And like you might do on Amazon, right? Just adding those extra details, the extra visual elements potentially that sell another thing. Exactly. And in, like in this case, it was it was basically adding a text callout in the top right corner through that custom frame. So um, we launched a split test there to see how that would compare against standard DPA or catalog ads without that. Um, and yeah, we, I mean, we found a pretty big difference, uh, which I think could be impactful for more brands interested in testing this, given that it's not a huge creative commitment to design the the imagery for it either um so what as copy did you put up there yes we tried to we tried some different stuff so we we tried some U, brand specific usps um so things that make the brand unique uh benefits features that type of stuff things that you might see like on the pdps or on the website and it, that might be called out on the home page or the about us section that really make it stand out with someone else and then also some offer details so stuff like free shipping or, um, or like return policy or money back guarantees. And then, um, the, what, what was interesting was which ones ended up performing. Um, and, uh, we, we saw within that some of the top performers were things like free shipping or an X number sold. Um, so a social proof type play, if you have, if, if your brand has sold volume of total products or a specific product, depending on, on how you want to set that up. And, uh, and then we saw a couple of the USP specific callouts that we, we had a high confidence in from our, our angle testing and creative testing as well, uh, rise up there, just given that they were way more front and center in these images when you're viewing the product versus being buried in the ad copy. And so what sort of lift did you see from this custom image generation for DPA campaigns? Yeah, it was a little bit brand to brand again, Overall, we saw a, a positive ROAS gain, um, a standout brand to kind of indicate on the, the higher end, saw a 21% lift in catalog campaign ROAS overall. So these ads quickly rose up into the top tier of performers within the ad account. They're still still rolling strong. Um, and uh, we, we basically tested we tested five to 10 of them and, and that ended up, ended up really proving strong. And now they're in multiple audiences. There's another brand too, to call out where we saw a little bit less of a gain just to kind of set the realistic expectations based on the, the transparency of that. Um, comparable ROAS was more so the bottom end, but a uh, CTR lift typically. So like that brand, for example, saw a 21% lift in CTR, uh, which I thought was really interesting. So generally mm-hmm. speaking, we saw an overall net, net gain on it showing an incremental growth. Um, we, we saw some success uh, mixing it in with the site and shop uh, conversion location, essentially. So um, that's one thing to factor in. If, if you do that, you should definitely pay close attention to your end revenue change. So, for example, in Shopify and the sales channel report, you can see Facebook and Instagram revenue um, if, you, uh, if you have that set up. And then take a look at the, the shift in pattern there to kind of align the data that you see in Meta with that. But yeah, ultimately really positive test. And it's like, it's really just comes down to making PNG files that you can within two steps, 
in your in your ad settings upload and and apply it the one thing to consider is that it will apply the same call out typically to each uh, image in the carousel across the product set so you just have to be careful of that you can create a custom product set if you feel the need to to align it but um yeah really uh, really positive test for us we'll throw it in the notes but just walk us through exactly where people find this function so they can test it like right now yeah, so if you're looking at how you can set it up, um, once you have your PNG files, you go, when you're setting up a catalog ad, uh, choose Carousel as the style of, of creative. Um, you'll see there's a, a section called Catalog, and then under that you'll see Creative Tools. Within Creative Tools, click Edit Creative, and then you click Add a Frame, and then you choose to upload a custom image, and uh, from there you go, you upload it and save it, and uh, you'll see it populate in the preview, and and there you go. Happy days. Let us know if uh, if this works for you. If you test this, if you're already doing it, if it works, we'd love to hear. I wanted to close on just something we were talking about in the pre-interview as well. What's uh, what's like I, again? I was mentioning I haven't been on the tools in, in a long time when it comes to actual Facebook ads, but I understand that it's changing all the time. Things are moving around. Uh, you're on the tools daily. What's what's one thing that really uh, gets in your grills when it comes to uh, some of these changes that Meta Ads is making? Yeah, so I I have a feeling other people have probably noticed this recently as well. Something I love to do is I love to take post IDs out of the Facebook post preview URL. So like when I when I see a winning ad and say it's building up a ton of great positive comments, likes, shares, all that fun stuff, I'll open it up and I'll grab the post ID and then I'll bring that post ID into another um, audience if I want to do some audience testing or a different campaign structure, like I want to bring it into Big Cap or something like that. Um, Meta, I know, just recently updated a ton of page experiences. And with those page experiences, we've seen that URL structure change. Um, it's gone from being in, in it like a personal view of Facebook into more of like a pages page manager view. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's essentially a result of that. And so now those ad posts, they were initially moved over into the ad post section, which you can find in the left-hand menu in ads manager. Um, but then even then it's, there was another shift that happened, I believe, like within the last couple of weeks. Um, and so it's made it harder to find. So now you have to manually scroll. The fastest way I found is to check the date on that post, the, when the original post was published, and then go into use existing post. There's a little option to select a post when you're building the ad. Go in there and it'll show you the menu and you scroll down to the date and grab that post. But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's been a, Meta it's been peeps. a negative shift. If you're, if you're listening, Meta people, you've got to, it sounds like this is something, you, where should they put it? Should they just, should they put it back where it was or is that, does that mess up their current scheme? It could mess up their current scheme, but man, it was nice having it in the URL to just quickly copy and paste that in and, and go from there. It's not a big time save. So in the world of AI where things are getting simpler, this is one of those ones where it felt like it, it took a step back. Nice. Well, if you guys hate this, uh, let us know. Uh, let us know if you've got any other pet peeves. We could just do, I bet we could just do a, uh, a podcast just all on Taylor's uh, pet peeves on uh, the suggestions and pet peeves. And Meta, should pay, Meta could pay us for it. They'd love it. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, I also there's a lot to love about Meta, so can't can't. Oh yeah, well we we t we talk we sing the praises every you know every every other episode, so I don't think we need to worry about it. Cool, nice. All right, Taylor, thanks a lot, man. This is great. Yeah, thanks so much for your time, Eric. It was fun as always. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you're not getting the D2C newsletter, you can subscribe for free at directtoconsumer.co. And if you want to learn more about Pilot House's all killer, no filler services, take off to pilothouse.co. I'm Eric Dick, and this has been the D2C podcast. We'll see you next time.